what a great question. What a long answer I could give you. Let's try and consolidate this into something that won't take more than three hours. Uh, I'm Canadian. I come from a very small town outside Toronto. I got my fresh start in comedy. I was going to theater school. It lasted three months. I dropped out, started taking improv classes, and then I was actually the youngest person ever hired to the touring company at the Second City in Toronto. I did the main stage there. I did the main stage in Chicago, and uh, then embarked on my glorious, illustrious film and television career, uh, which has culminated in, in many credits, but the most important being Superstore, which I've currently been on for four years, which is pretty amazing. Uh, outside of that, I would say I am a lover, I am a giver, and I uh, love animals and Disneyland. I had my Canadian accent beaten out of me when I was performing at the Second City in Chicago. They were unrelenting about my very thick accent, which was ironic to me because all of them had Chicago accents. Um, <laughs> I think the most Canadian thing about me is my deep passion for socialized healthcare and ketchup chips, which seems counterintuitive, but you gotta live. Ooh, most memorable audition. Uh, <laughs> Well, the worst was probably when I was screen testing for a role on a Matthew Perry sitcom and I had gone through so many auditions. You know, you, you, you do your initial audition, then you do a callback, then you meet with the producers, then you do the studio screen test. I had gotten through all of those and they were like, you're the choice, you're the one. It's your, it's your job to lose. They love you, you're perfect, do it exactly how you've done it. And I went into the network test and I had to read with Matthew Perry and I just stared into the beautiful blue eyes of Chandler Bing and lost all of my dialogue, and I restarted that audition three times. Three times. Uh, and every time you restart an audition in front of a bunch of executives, you can just feel them losing more and more interest. And as I left, Matthew Perry looked me in the eyes and went, sorry. When I read the pilot script for Superstore, I was immediately convinced that this show would get picked up, it would run for many seasons, and that I was the only person to play Dina. Probably because I actually created a character that was really similar to Dina when I was working at the Second City in Toronto. And so when I read the script, I was like, oh my god, I know her, I play her, I'm the only person who could do this. And so I started calling my manager every single day, being like, when's my Superstore audition, when's my Superstore audition? And they were like, they're not seeing anybody yet, calm down, weirdo. And so eventually, they wouldn't see me. I had been on uh, a show called Super Fun Night uh, and a show called Another Period, and so I had some experience, but the casting director for Superstore at the time, it's changed since then, she didn't know me, and she was like, I can't let this woman go straight to producers. She could make a fool of me. Anyway, I went into the audition with her. It's her and I one-on-one, -on -one, and after the first take, she couldn't even look at me. She was like, I'm such an asshole for making you come in and do this. You're so good. You're so perfect for this. And I was like, yeah, bitch, I am. And I booked it. For me, any character is definitely in the body first, so it's like how you stand or how you hold yourself or how you move, and when I was developing the character that Dina eventually became, at least who she was based on, it was all about like stance and like hands on hips and posture and kind of like that kind of like rigid chest. And I will say that it's difficult for me to play Dina if my hair's not pulled back. It always feels weird to go into that character if I can feel my hair down. We've done it a few times on the show, but it feels very odd. Um, but definitely, I think it starts in the spine for me. I mean, the, the original character that she was based on was based on a classified ad that read, uh, Single woman seeks platonic male friend for hard rock concerts, roller coasters, and fun. And that's what came out. There are so many amazing moments on the show. I mean, being able to have been on a show that's on for four years is something that's so rare, certainly um, <laughs> in the current climate, uh, there, because there's so much amazing TV going on. So it's hard to pick just one. I mean, I had an amazing time when I got to write an episode in season three and get to be on set. And it's funny, because one of my most memorable times on the set of Superstore was actually not when I was on camera at all. It was getting to be off camera, watching all of my friends, who are so amazingly talented and getting to come up with jokes for each of them on the spot. You know, normally when I'm, I'm on the show as myself, I improvise all the time, I come up with things, but now I had the opportunity to, uh, to improvise for seven cast members. I mean, it was such a gift. And it really did make me realize just how lucky we are and just how talented everybody on that show is. So I think that's the most memorable. 
I think the key to good comedy, and I think Canadians nail this, is self-deprecation. I think that a lot of the reason why people, people are like, why are Canadians so funny? I always get asked this question, and I, I think it's because A, we grew up in the cold, so you have to laugh to stay warm, and B, it's because we don't take ourselves seriously. The, the, the people that love making fun of Canadians the most are Canadians, and it's because it's like, life's too short. And, and there's also something about, comedy is, is I, somebody once told me that comedy, laughter is a recognition that a person understands. And I think when you look at comedy that way, it's actually quite fascinating that people laugh because it's like, I get that joke. Even if it takes them off, off guard or surprises them, it's like, oh, ha, 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 ha. It's an acknowledgement that you're having, especially in live comedy, between you and the audience when you're saying something and they're like, no, I get that, that's funny. Um, so I think that the bottom line is, is that comedy has to be something that uh, people understand, that, that surprises people, and ultimately if you're making fun of yourself, people are always going to laugh. There's a lot to come in season four of Superstore. Dina obviously has given birth to Glenn's baby, so we're gonna have to see them interact. What's it gonna be like when she's reunited with this thing that grew in her for nine months? Um, maybe some romance, who knows? Maybe I can't talk too much about it, but maybe people are gonna be pretty excited at what's about to come. Um, there's always great stuff for Dina. It's been a gift that I've been consistently given interesting things and, and being able to do things that maybe are more dramatic than you would expect. But I think that that's what makes Dina a really cool character is that it's not two dimensional, it's three dimensional. You get to see all these different sides of her. You get to see that she has real emotion. She's not a sociopath as some may, you know, kind of think on the surface. Um, but yeah, and we get to also, the other thing I can tease is a lot more fun Amy Dina stuff. And that's the stuff I love the most. I love their friendship and, and fans really love their friendship too. So I'm excited about the rest of season four. I worked in a store like this in high school. So it felt very surreal walking into the set on the first day because it was like, I used to do this and now I do it on television. That's so weird. Um, it definitely changes the way I act in superstores now because I get recognized a lot and people are frightened of me. Employees who see me in these stores are like, oh, it's Dina, oh no. Uh, but I'm just there to buy toilet paper, guys, like everybody else. I put my pants on like everybody else, you know what I mean? I'm not there to critique what you're doing. Uh, but it's, uh, yeah, it's been a very like surreal, full circle experience for me in my life to have had my first job be working in the shoe department at a Zeller's in Belleville, Ontario, Canada, and now as a woman in her 30s, uh, young, early 30s, very early 30s, barely, just, I'm just a whiff past 30, um, be able to, to play a character on TV, on international television, it's, it's amazing. Dina was, is definitely the favorite, my most favorite role I've ever played, the reason being that it was a character that I developed on stage and then managed to get onto a American television show. I mean, that's just so surreal. I started, you know, doing these shows live in, in Canada and Toronto, and now, years later, I'm doing it on TV every Thursday night on, in prime time. I mean, that's like such a dream. And and I think that I've got to play a lot of fun, different, cool characters. I think that, that the next thing I'd like to do is play somebody who's not so high status. I tend to get cast as characters who are like extremely confident or brash or bold and I think it would be a nice uh, difference to get to play somebody who's maybe a little bit more mousy. Oh gosh, I mean I want to say an adventure but I've never left North America, that's the truth. Anytime I book a trip I book work. Hey, actors, struggling actors, if you're not booking any gigs, book a trip to Europe. I Trust me, you'll get the next gig you audition for. Um, <laughs> buy travel insurance. Uh, if I was gonna be any book I think it would be a romance. I think that truly the story is, is the journey that I've gone through, a lot of relationships, a lot of failure, but ultimately it's the romance story about myself. I've come pretty far, you know? I grew up in a small town where not a lot of people necessarily get out of there, and I did, and I kind of taken it all the way. So certainly this year, 2019, The Book of Lauren Ash is a romance novel with herself. Namaste.